So guys, I'll, I'll kick off um, while you're eating there. And first of all, thank you, continue that conversation, to thank you for coming and giving us your time here tonight. We really do appreciate it. And it's actually fantastic for us to go around, present all our products, discuss things, get feedback. It's actually really valuable to get out of the office and out of the, the daily grind of work. So we really enjoy talking to you and meeting you and, and getting feedback. So um, welcome to the LG house. This is our um, luxurious home for a couple of days, at least this week. We're very excited to be here out of the office as well. And what we'd like to do is present to you our presentation, Rooms with a View. So that's the sort of theme of the event. And although the, the view is a bit dark at night, it's really about the TVs that you'll see in each room. So this is the abbreviated version because I know you guys want to sit down and actually ask a lot of questions and see a lot of content. So I'll talk to you about how we're going to do that in a minute. But what I'm going to introduce you to is Josh Marshall, who is our Head of Home Entertainment Sales at LG Australia. So Josh is going to give you a few insights as to the market at the moment. Um, and our retailer relationships, which uh, are very important to us. And a man who needs no introduction, but I will anyway, Thomas Baker, our Head of Home Entertainment Training, but in reality, he's our tech guru that um, can answer all your questions. And um, he'll be going through and talking to you about features and helping you um, review the TVs. So that's the crew who will be sort of taking you around. So. Our format is we've got a couple of different rooms and zones in the house. So after we finish some brief speeches here, um, we'll talk to you about some options and just maybe have a think about this as, as we're going through our stuff. Option one is the really short tour where we effectively go around and say, this is this TV, here are the four key features. Here's the next TV, here are the four key features. So you know what's where in the house and then we effectively let you guys go where you want to go, sit down and we'll then help you watch content, access the TV, do whatever you want to do. So option one is the really short tour with the key points. Or option two is a slightly extended tour where effectively Thomas will go through the four or five points for each zone and explain them a little bit better. And then you can still spend time at the end to your heart's content up to about 8.30 I think. So it's the short tour or the longer tour, which I'll come back to you for a group discussion, group uh, decision after I've finished. So um, what have I got to say? I want to talk to you about basically consumer insights. So what we're seeing in the marketplace. So I think all of you would be aware that TV sales and home entertainment and generally home upgrading is just going berserk. So obviously because of this terrible time that we're living in, people are spending more time in their home environments and they're not travelling overseas, they're not doing this, they're not doing that. They're effectively spending money renovating and upgrading their houses and the booming house prices in Australia are reassuring them that they're making a good investment to keep upgrading their kitchen, their laundry and what we're seeing is they're upgrading home entertainment but they're upgrading more and more to the premium models which is perfect for us selling very premium TVs in this market. So we're seeing that out in the marketplace. We're seeing huge consumption in movies and subscription apps. So last year we saw in the total market 15 million people in Australia access a subscription app at least once. So those numbers have really gone berserk in the last couple of years in terms of people accessing subscription services uh, i.e. Netflix, Disney, Apple, Amazon Prime. And I think in conjunction with all of those apps coming out, like Disney's still pretty new, Apple's come across to the LG models, uh, Stan as well, there's new apps coming every day. So you've got new apps coming, people being at home more, and this just realization, I think it's a tipping point of smart TV where people realize they've got all this content actually in their lounge room, or more to the point, their neighbour down the road now has and they're missing out. So they're going into Harvey Norman, JB Hi-Fi to actually upgrade. So we're definitely seeing that in the movie space. Interesting though, sport, um, viewership is still up in sport in Australia. I mean, Australians love sport all the time, right? But this Anzac Day NRL round was apparently the most viewed uh, free-to-air and you know, Foxtel broadcast games ever. So not only 
are people watching more movies, but they continue to watch sport. And we've got Olympics coming, State of Origin, my tip is it's going to be the most watched series ever. They always seem to break records for State of Origin, but I think it'll be most watched again. And I'm sure something that you guys are very familiar with, gaming. Gaming has just gone ballistic in, in this global pandemic. That So much so that I read a stat that um, the PlayStation guys are saying they will not catch up with demand until mid next year, I think, or end of next year of consoles. Our partner is Microsoft Xbox, and I was telling someone previously that um, we, we wanted to do some bundle deals and promotions with them. That They haven't got enough stock to do that for us. Hey guys. Hey, yeah. Hey, yeah. Welcome. Come in. Um, grab a seat and, and grab some food over there if you want. So yeah, the gaming market just going bananas. So again, all of this sort of um, environmental things happening, we do not see TV sales slowing down till the end of this year at least. We, we are in a good position with our stock, which Josh is going to talk to you about. Um, due to some investments, some long-term investments we've made, but we're seeing some great product um, coming for Australia for consumers. And that product is split generally into three categories. Good, I say good, better, best. So good is our standard U UHD 4K model. Really great TV, has all the smart technology you see across the whole range, um, but it's an entry point TV. If you step up to better, that's our nano cell range in LED. So color enhancements to the picture, um, may, maybe more motion, uh, that's more hertz in some of those TVs to give you better sports production, and definitely bigger screen sizes. So we've seen, we're putting more 75 inch and 86 inch TVs into our UHD and our nano cell range this year across our good and our better range. But the big kind of highlights are really in our best technology, which is OLED in front of you. So this is our new baby. It's the 83 inch C1 OLED TV. It's the biggest 4K OLED that we've brought to Australia. And behind you is actually an A1, but that's a 48 inch um, model OLED as well. So that's new in terms of um, broadening our range. We had a limited quantity of C1s last year and A148s and C148s we're bringing in in big quantities this year. So effectively we're extending our range uh, at the top end and the bottom end in terms of sizing because we, we think if, if people can afford it, that OLED is the best TV technology to step up to. So that's our general premise. Um, we're supporting OLED with a big TV campaign going out June and July to tell all Australians that. And um, we're very thankful for all the awards that we um, get from both the reviewers, the critics, um, and everybody with expert abilities, but also we see a lot of consumer awards. So we've got the Choice Award in Australia five years in a row for TV, and we picked up the double last year with CanStar as well for the first year. So we've got both of those sort of consumer awards, which to us, on top of all the critical acclaim that we get from you guys for OLED, the awards we get from CES, um, it's nice to be validated from the end consumers. So that's the sort of um, top level pitch from my perspective. And now I'm going to hand you over to Josh, who's going to give you a few insights on our partnerships with retail and the market. So, so 2020 was certainly a you know, interesting year, as we all know, for many different reasons. But you know, for us, in the TV space in particular, it's been such a cut and paste scenario for forever. Like I've been selling TVs for over 20 years and pretty well much it's the same pattern, right? We bring new products in the last 12 months and away we go. But, you know, with the spin that was last year, uh, we went from such a structured and collaborative approach with our retail partners for inventory and planning that it just went out the window and we're certainly becoming a new normal, uh, not understanding too far um, forward than the four weeks advance. So, I'm excited this year around uh, having some kind of normality to come back as far as production and um, all signs are looking quite good as, uh, with our production at the moment, especially within the OLED space, so um, there's, some, there's some confidence there. But what we really saw and learned from last year, as uh, Tony mentioned, was really that quality and premium product really shone through. Um, the retailers speaking to them, they, they kind of relished with the time that they would have with the consumers in the floor when they could get them back into stores, of course, um, to actually upsell the product. So people seem to have more time. 
Um, and that really worked in uh, favour of products that were better value or better quality. So with OLED technology being you know, the premium technology in the TV world, um, it definitely shone through. So where we had stock available, especially in the back end of last year, um, we definitely saw a growth within that subcategory. And that's kind of forged a lot of the thought process and the offering that we've got for the 21 range. Um, so as Tony mentioned, we've got two really exciting ends of the scale here as far as OLED additions to the range this year um, with 48. And with that addition, uh, we're actually able to achieve for the first time under $3,000 at launch RRP um, this, this month. So we're excited about that and we've got something obviously at the high end uh, of the market as well. So a, a really uh, great offering with, uh, with OLED. What the retailers have also shared with this is they've enjoyed that time, but really the information that they get in, in stores is really making the decision. So we still believe that you know around 50% of the decision is based on the information that's in store. Um, so with the enhancements that we've got in the range and the ranging that the customers have in fact given us this year to get into stores, um, you know, we think that that touch and feel environment that, uh, that is the bricks and mortar stores um, is only a big benefit for these type of products and obviously giving the uh, consumers a choice. So outside of OLED, we've got lots of uh, big models, lots of big screens that we've added to the range this year. Um, as Tony mentioned, through that UHD uh, nanocell and an exciting new launch today, um, we've got so many new additions in, in the big screen. And we're kind of seeing in a lot of retail partners that you know 30% of their sales now are in that 75 inch and above. So it's just shifted so much over the last couple of years. Um, you know, we haven't had the plethora of options in the big screen space in, in previous generations, but this year we're, we're pretty excited to have that um, definitely covered as, as we move into this year. So um, lots, of, lots of things happening there. So um, I suppose to get into a bit more detail around the product, I'll hand over the reins to, to Tommy. Thank you. Actually, a slight yep. change sorry. there. Slight change, no, sorry. That's okay, yeah. Cool. Um, is I'm going to come back and ask the results of my question to you in terms of the short or the long. But before I do that, there are two uh, uh, two announcements that we have here today. So we, we know you guys uh, love breaking news. So number one announcement will be downstairs. Um, when we get to that point, we'll call that out. And we are asking that that's embargoed till tomorrow at 2 p.m. So announcement number one will be embargoed to tomorrow at 2 p.m. to give everybody else who's coming in the morning a chance to see it and prepare their stories. So we, you know, we'd do the same if it was you guys coming in later. And the second announcement, just to complicate things and make things challenging, <laughs> the second announcement, and I will call this out, is that we'll be embargoing that to eight o'clock Friday morning. So two o'clock Thursday and eight o'clock Friday, and I'll call out when we get to the appropriate zones what, that, what those announcements are. So, like I said, guys, we've been doing like a 45 minute to an hour session going around all the zones, talking about all the product features. Thomas does a demonstration on each zone. So do you want that 45 minute longer sort of prezzo Thomas presents to all of you all the features, or do you want just the, you know, four key points and then we move to the next room and then you guys come back and find your favorite TV or split up so short or longer tour? I'm going for the longer one. You're going for the longer one? Say. Yeah, I feel like that would be the easiest way to make sure I've yep. got all the yep. sites. Yep. If I wanted the shorter one, it would have come to one of the day sessions. Oh, okay. <laughs> the whole idea of the, the <laughs> session was the longer okay. one. So. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. You want the long one? Yeah. Find the longer. Yeah. I can't, we, I kind of said to Thomas, I reckon that'll pick the longer. I mean, this is this is what this long. This is what the night session was supposed to be about. Yeah. Well. Yeah. But what we were, <laughs> what we want to make sure is that you guys get the time yeah. to spend in front of each TV, and you can uh, watch whatever content you want as well. So. Well, it's good to give the explanation. So. Yeah. So so we'll do the That's longer great. tour, and then, like I said, you're welcome to stay until. Uh, at point we get kicked out and the owners come back. So, okay. so, so now I will hand over to Thomas. Yeah. Oh, cool. 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 Awesome. Or you can stay with the yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Great to see you all again. All right, it's been a little while. Yeah, it's been a while. Good. Hey, it's awesome. I think it's been in about eighteen months since I've seen you, and uh, it's good to have you back. And the product's even better this year, so it's a good thing. Uh, this is our new. 83 inch OLED, right? And uh, since we last saw you, LG's opened a second OLED factory, which essentially doubles our supply. 
of OLED panels, but it also gives us access to big screens as well. Uh, 48 inch was for the gamers, and the 83 inch added a, a relatively affordable price. Normally our 88 was like in the 60 grand mark, but this is, you know, have we told them the price? Current 14. 14. 14 and a half. Yeah, and uh, this is what well, people have been wanting. Right? If you can't go on a holiday and you don't need another motorbike or another car, people got cash in the bank, upgrade, home cinema. I feel sorry for event cinemas because we're taking over. Um, but you know, as you know, OLED does so well and these conditions um, do definitely play into, you know, movie watching environment um, here. And uh, you know, OLED is famous for blacks, right? So we always talk about it, you know, it looks so good. Um, but people say, oh, you know, you don't get an OLED if you have a bright environment, you know, such and such. But as that light is flashing, you can see that when you have perfect blacks to begin with, everything against the black looks bright and vivid and punchy. And OLED really does nail that balance, we believe, uh, for overall picture quality. Sure, there's a new kit on the block, you know, mini LED, but OLED has some um, strengths, and we still think it's the king of TVs. So, see blacks, right? Um, but overall pitch quality, viewing angle, you know, whether you're front on or you're off to the side where Ray is there, you know, you don't get any decay or color washout or you don't get any, um, you know, backlight bleed, right? Because there's no backlight in an OLED. Every pixel is self-lit um, here. But there's also the motion, and that's something that maybe isn't always talked about as much, and I'd love to quickly just talk about that before we go into some more. Uh, movie trailers, but can everyone grab their mobile phone? Because uh, this one involves you, and uh, I want to see, you know, who thinks they're pretty good at taking photos? <laughs> this is a very simple test pattern, um, and I'm going to pause it so just so you can see that the pattern looks like this. You want it to look as close to that as possible, but when I start it, you can take a photo of it and then you compare how um, how it looks on the TV, and you'll notice that our eyes naturally add a bit of blur. So you want a still image of this movie? Yeah, yeah. still image, no slow mo, fancy TikTok stuff. <laughs> Keep it nice. That's that's true. True. <laughs> so when you look at your photo and you like zoom in, you should see pretty crisp red and green squares. If you don't get that, yeah. now you just want to try another photo. How does it look? Oh, you're it's on. really fine. So I think your auto mode's a bit it's, uh, hot. Yeah, yeah. 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 How's how's your guys? Looks nice all right. Come up pretty good. Oh. It's automatically going to night mode. So you're going to turn night yeah. mode off. Definitely yeah. turn night mode off. Yeah. <laughs> it's all too fancy. They cancel each other. Out. That's right. <laughs> Manual mode. It's not like uh, fire it up. How do we go? What's it? Do we need to phone a friend? Okay. <laughs> So how did it look? It should look pretty razor sharp, right? Then we not get razor sharp. Yeah, I gave up on trying to fix my phone to do it. Oh, <laughs> all right, well, I, can well, with, I can see it with my eyeballs that's better true. than my camera could. Mm -hmm. Okay. One thing I do want to ask. Yeah. That, it's like um, there shouldn't be any light bleed whatsoever on movies like that. But there's definitely a sort of aura coming off the sides of it. Is that? Uh, yes. Or is so that a brain or mind? If, uh, if I had a piece of paper here, which I don't, but I could show you that it's our eyes. Um, so this logo here. Does it look like there's Can a you see an aura? Right there, but is that... I need a prop. Around the logo? No. It's, yeah. it's our eyes. But if I cover it, it's gone. It's our eyes. Mm -hmm that are causing that aura. Oh my god, I've got so many false reviews. Yeah, right. <laughs> 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 it's all right. Okay. You need to be 20 <laughs> again, you know? <laughs> yeah. You need to be 20 yeah, again. Because some of that, oh, it's like his refraction going horizontally through the panel. It's like, actually, no, it's just your eye. Yeah. It's all good. But, um, but feeding a TV good quality picture is the most important. And of course, we know Dolby, Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos, um, we can get them on Netflix, uh, uh, Disney Plus, um, Apple TV. You know, we've got all these household famous apps here directly where we can. I'm going to jump into Disney quickly, where brands like Disney have chosen Dolby Vision as the best HDR format, so they can get all their classics remastered. I'm finding in the gradients there. 
that, is that them or you? Or, and again, I've probably got every review I've ever written wrong. <laughs> um, a lot of these, uh, some will smooth that out better than others, but a lot of it comes down to content. But then this is an 83 to 4K. So. Sure. This is a um, posterization. It's because of probably 8 bit app. Some apps yeah. like Stan is only running in HD. So as a UE, it's pretty yeah. bad. But it's, yeah, it's not the TV. TV can show, and you'll see on that A series, I've got a proper 4K Blu ray, and you'll go, Oh, that's what I want to see. Anyway, anyway, so here is, uh, you know, even classic movies, you know, from the 80s and stuff, jump in Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos, and uh, we, we actually took away at one point this little pop up. Yeah. <laughs> Just winding up, someone's in the background of this. Yeah. If we took that away at one point, everyone complained because it's that satisfaction that I am watching <laughs> the best. It's not just that, it's, it's, it's legitimately knowing the apps are actually working correctly. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sure. that go into yeah. it. Yeah, I've had many moments yeah. where. And, yeah. and yeah. you connected your sound bar properly for me. Well, yeah. I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah, interesting. Yeah, interesting. things outside your control, obviously, like the app might not be working properly, so it's really valuable to have. It is, it is. It's a, yeah, it's good. And, and that's available also, and it hasn't actually come out yet, so I'm going to. Ruin their thunder, but Stan has just started mastering their titles in Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos as well. So you won't see it yet, but apparently it's just about to switch on. So that makes four apps available now in Australia with Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos. Did we Atmos. report we heard that from an anonymous industry source? <laughs> Preferably. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I was told, look out for it, test it, go for it, and I'm like, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. And I don't know what that. Why? But I'm sure it's just about sorry. Yeah. yeah. Cool, okay, so that is um, uh, our OLED pitch quality, of course, in our OLED, self lit pixels, best content, Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos, but the big thing for us this year is actually uh, we've upgraded our Magic Remote here. New design, the other one had been around a little, a little while. We kept all the good features, point and click, voice control, <coughs> Um, the quick access buttons, but it's, it's new and it's new like our smart TV platform this year, WebOS 6.0. Is it backlit? The remote? Yeah. Uh, no, it's not. It's not, but all the numbers are in white, so it should be <laughs> all right. One of your competitors was raving about that earlier this year, I think. About why. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It is backlit on our top, top six. Right. Okay. Sets, yeah. not, the, not the six. Okay, so remember good old days five years ago, we went down to Blockbuster, uh, maybe if you had a VPN you could get Netflix, remember the good old days, like, it's <laughs> just five years ago. But here we are today, and uh, last year when we were all working from home, we watched a lot of movies, we played a lot of games, and uh, we learned a lot about how customers use smart TV. So we've totally reconfigured our menu in dark mode, which is like right on trend, and We've moved it so it's all big graphics. It's like the good old days of navigating the DVD shelves at Blockbuster, right? You've got big, expressive, emotive pictures. And, you know, instead of searching like this, I'm just going to pick it. Not, I don't endorse horror movies, but just it's an easy one to look for. <laughs> um, so, you know, it. <clears throat> you can jump into it. That's one way of searching, and that's how a lot of people search or they think, I've got Netflix signing to only look in Netflix. Um, but people are now having two, three, four streaming apps, so we need to move in the new direction where people are consuming across multiple categories, and why our voice search and our universal search is so powerful. Search for action movies. And so the power of the search engine, it's going to bring up Dis oh, it's only doing Disney because I'm in Disney. Whoops. Mm. Whoops. Uh, my, my mistake. Let's pick this one here. Search for action comedy movies. So before I said action, now I can do dual genre at the same time. And now it's going to give me results from other apps all together. So it's it's blending. I can search by actor, actress, um, you know, Academy Award winning movies. I can search by uh, what's hot, what's trending. And it's another way people should be searching. If anyone's talking to Siri, this is just so familiar. When I talk to older people, they're like, oh, I feel weird about talking to a machine. 
but you know it's that's quickly changing away but there's a new um, element to our WebOS platform that I'd love to highlight here in the trending now bar is as you use the TV more and more and as you start watching content it will learn about what you like to watch and then this bar will start to customize according to your preferences so it's like a recommendation engine right here and then as we scroll down we're giving all the big apps a dedicated hub where they can promote what defines them what are their <coughs> flagship series and you can see it's really starting to look like you know some of those well-known media players that kind of blockbuster feel there but instead of being restricted just searching one app at a time now when people have two or three i know i have like four plus spotify um, it, it allows you to see all these things across there and you've got new releases there. So it's, it's actually catering to what people, uh, like we're kind of being driven to watch these new shows because it's like, have you seen this? Have you seen Tiger King? Have you seen, you know, Serial Killers? You know, like all these amazing shows that you never watch, but because everyone's watching them, you feel like you have to watch them. So that's how um, all this new Smart TV platform is going and LG's right on trend. Um, to make sure that our customers are around, up to date. Now, there's one more thing I'd love to show is, we all have smartphones, you don't have to get this, your phone out this time. But, great camera, you know, our whole life is in our pocket, in our phone, but when we wanna show other people photos, of course we could Instagram it, but in an environment like this, how do I get this onto the best screen in the house? And so we've made it even easier this year because on this C series as an NFC tag in the remote. And if I touch my phone against there, I'm presented with a, a menu here, this is through the ThingQ app. And I can just view my mobile device on the TV. There it goes. And uh, beautiful, there's my phone. I can go landscape, but just for the sake of time. This is a prop phone, okay? So it turns to be worried about what pops up. <laughs> um, there, so that's me with the wife, and uh, so I'm in the backyard. There's one of our children, another child. Uh, busy <laughs> mopping up little mistakes on the floor. And uh, and uh, there's just my wife, and that's my brother. He got the genetic uh, mix just right, <laughs> okay? So, um, and then there's my friend Alex. So it's so easy, just one tap, off you go. It's so good. You look right? pretty good for only two. Yeah. Mm. Oh, oh, he's it's 28, fun. I think he's... Uh, 28. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. And th does that work with uh, iPhones as easily, or is it Android only? Ah, this, we would love to make it an iPhone feature, but at the moment, the Apple iPhone NFC reader mm. is only for Apple Pay. But, but can you uh, mirror an Apple iPhone? Yeah, yeah. absolutely, you can. Okay, AirPlay good. is fully just supported. Not one. Yeah, yeah, just on the yeah. yeah, like that. Now, there's one more thing. Shut this down. I'm um, sorry. Is it is it mirroring the just the video, uh, just the image, or is it doing audio as well? Oh, I'm doing audio too. Okay. Yeah. Just gonna disconnect. And then again, if I tap, <clears throat> there's an, a few options. There's one for gallery, one for mirroring, as we did, and then there is enjoy TV sound on my mobile. So. We all, you know, like, just use Bluetooth headphones, but there's actually quite a lot of people, especially with young kids, or um, you've got people who need headphones or hearing aids, right? They're all like Bluetooth connected, and the TVs up until this year could only support one Bluetooth um, receiver at a time, one device, one headphone. So we've added this new feature called um, Send TV Sound to the Phone. It's called Sound Share, actually. I'm just going to play a simple file. And the logic is that your earphones or your ear headphones or your earbuds are already connected to your phone. So why would you unpair them and then pair them back to the TV and then pair them back to your phone when you're done, when you can just turn your phone into the sender and it receives the TV audio on the phone through Wi-Fi. Okay, so let's play something simple. Oh, I like this city so so much and there's a reason why they call it the garden city. Here we go, so this is coming through the phone and as you'd expect the volume control is now on here on the phone itself so I can get rid of that. 
And uh, that's a cool little feature, a little enhancement that we've added. Is there a lag offset? What was that? Is there a lag offset? Um, I think uh, I've gone two walls away from a TV. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's a bit okay. of like she's talking and it's kind oh, of... Oh, there was like, some? Audio. Yeah. Not much, but I mean... It's, Maybe a little bit. Right you could, um, you can slow down the picture to match the audio. Yeah, that's what I meant. The yeah, just the offset. Yeah, yeah, you okay. can. There's 300 milliseconds, which is pretty significant, yeah, actually. And, and is, does that, is there an app that you have to download for that to work? Yeah, it's the LG ThinQ app. Right. It's the same app that you use for connecting our fridges and washing machines mm. and TVs all together. And does it work, is that app on iOS as well? It is. So yeah. And this feature is available iOS. on iOS. Right. Good. You can also right. do that. Yeah. Yeah, so that's the uh, OLED. And I think mm. I'd just love to turn your attention to this little one over here. We've always had a B and a C and a G series. Uh, but we've got a new entry series called the A1. Um, and this is the 48 inch. And uh, it, it has everything you see, except it's only HDMI 2.0, not 2.1. So I kind of call it the C light, but don't quote me on that one. Uh, but the A1 looks brilliant. And uh, I'm playing this movie here, and if you're a big Blu-ray buff, this is a 4K 60 frame per second movie. It's one of only two ever made, uh, released. And, uh, and it's because the maximum input of these ports is 60 frames per second. And that's okay, because if you're watching movies, if you're watching sport, if you're watching um, TV shows, nothing would go over 30 or 50 frames anyway. So the perfect step down in our range, if you can't afford a, a C series or you know just can't quite make that jump, the A series is our new entry into OLED. And I think the guy said earlier that's the first year we've had an OLED TV under three grand. Yep. Yeah, at launch. So this is because of our new factory allowing us to sell and build different models at different price points. Where's the factory? Where's the factory? People's Republic of uh, China. And what's the biggest size in the A-series? Uh, it goes 4855 to 65. Yeah. There it is. And the picture quality, you know, if you give it the right content, like OLEDs just sing so beautifully. And the A-series is going to be a really good seller. It's ranged everywhere that the C is. And uh, it's the first time we're selling it. There's a lot of enthusiasm around this model as well. But if you are serious about pitch quality, C uh, has a couple of edges here and there, plus it's the one for the gaming features that we're going to look at. Definitely. Definitely gaming. Yeah, you wouldn't buy this one if you're a gaming buff. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. That's it. All right, let's okay. go. All right, yeah, guys, so what we're going to do is get you to all jump up now and move across to our next room. Okay. So, oh, yeah. there. so, guys, the introduction, so this is our gallery room or our design room, and strangely enough, it's our gallery TV that we're showing in it. So this is the 65-inch gallery G1 OLED TV, and effectively, this is my favourite TV because not only does it look um, beautiful on the outside or the, or the screen itself, but it's universally slim and when we've got Thomas presenting we'll get you to come up and have a look at it down the back of it and as I was just talking about it comes with wall mounts included in the box as well as um, the tabletop standard feet so the idea our preference is you actually put it on a wall and because there's a recess in the back of the TV there the concept is that it it mounts sort of seamlessly on your wall like a, like a picture or a painting. So, um, but overall, the look of this TV is the top end of our OLED um, because of the style and design. And we're trying to tap into that, that trend that we talked about and, and you guys know very well of people upgrading and premiumization in their homes. But one of my favorite um, pieces of this product, and I've, I've given the guys um, grief internally to make sure we range it, is this gallery stand that the product's sitting on here. So it is an optional extra. It is uh, gonna retail for $4.99, but it offsets the TV beautifully and kind of turns it from having to hide it in a room to putting it out front. And it also contains some mounting brackets on the back. So uh, the whole point and, and recesses down there in the feet, which is a little hard to see in the dark for the power cable, so that it all looks beautiful. So. There's a couple of brackets here. In fact, if you guys want to hop up now and have a look, I'll get you to come over and Thomas is very finally going to shine a torch on it because we didn't practice oh, this yeah. at night. So yeah, you can put your Apple TV box 
or your Foxtel cable set up in the back there and have them all in one piece there so that there's not boxes all over the lounge room. And you want to talk about the IR receiver? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do a shirt on that. You can do a shirt on that. Can I just ask a quick question? Uh, yeah. Especially if this is going to be gallery and show artwork. Yeah. Um, one thing that seems to be being noted a bit more these days is with Ola getting mature, mm -hmm. that burning is actually becoming a bit more of a noticeable factor. And some people, especially like if they're watching an awful lot of YouTube, get YouTube bars across and then the news logos. Yeah. Um, I know you've got technologies to mitigate that. Yeah. But, um, it, it is sort of becoming a bit more of an issue, not as bad as plasma, but what, what's the latest on how they're doing burning? Sure. I, Thomas I, wants it's, to. It's interesting. Um, I'll just give some context. These are OLED watches, OLED phones, OLED TVs, but the, the, the anti-marketing out there seems to tell people it's only an OLED TV issue. But OLED phones and watches are, are totally immune to it. So it's, I know there's a lot more um, uh, pork barreling going on on that issue. But we looked at the stats, actually, of how many OLEDs we actually um, have investigated and then um, resolved issues for customers. And 2018 onwards, that's all the data I could get, this is actual LG repair figures, it's only just over 1%. And that puts it on par with any LCD TV. That's what we call like an early life kind of issue. So even after three years, just over 1% tells us that it really isn't a problem. We're not concerned with people gaming on OLEDs, we're not concerned about people, you know, watching gallery content because the the the, the measures we have inside with the the screensaver, the logo detection, the pixel shifting are so powerful that we have a lot of confidence in our OLED TV durability now. And uh, we stand by that. Customers obviously um, believe us because they're buying OLEDs in big quantities. And, and you know, I, I point back to the fact that, you know, I was talking about the, the choice award, for, that's from consumers. So, albeit it's across all our TV products, but, you know, consumers in Australia are saying best brand choice and that's a best satisfied. Sorry. It's a combination of uh, consumer feedback and the scores. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But effectively, people saying, I love my LG TV over the above uh, the other brands. So, yeah, yeah. I, I, I was, I'm surprised it came up. Just to follow up, sorry, what was it? What? Total sales. Total sales or repairs? No, total sales, the repair of total sales. Okay. Yeah, and, and a good indication is that is we have OLEDs that hit five, 6,000 hours on display in the store, and they're sold off display, and if there was a problem, we would have seen it by then. And so we're comfortable that it's not an issue. Um, right. The one thing I didn't touch on, which sure. I'll, I'll, well, I'll leave you with, is sure. the fact that this, speaking about OLED technology and all the things that Thomas said about it, this gallery uh, TV in 2021 is actually the model that features our Evo panel. So this is the next generation OLED panel technology and it gives you a brighter picture than our other OLED models. So the gallery product is, is the TV that will have that OLED EVO panel in it. And uh, yeah, it looks pretty good to yeah. me, like I said, on the inside and out. Sure. All right, so to continue with EVO, um, OLED EVO is two parts. One part is the extra layer of green luminous material, which means we can push it harder um, and OLED's had something called ABL, Automatic Brightness Limiter. So when you would go 50% or 100% white window, like full white rectangle, the brightness would fall off cliff, big time. Evo is what we're targeting for that particular phenomena. So Evo allows us to go 20% brighter if you compare this G1 to a 65G10 or GX from last year. 20% brighter when showing full white. Uh, which was what people wanted, you know, and it was like you see the most benefit if you watch ice hockey or like Winter Olympics, things like a lot of white in the screen there. And so Evo is also extra components like a T-Com board and control driver in the back to allow it to be pushed harder like that. So Evo is exciting, we're really happy with it and uh, it's the future of OLED screens for us. 
Um, so Tony was saying about Evo being slim design and it actually was really well embraced. Australia was one of the top five, I think, maybe three in the world for um, Evo, not Evo, for gallery sales as a percentage of our population total. So we did really well. Australians love it. It love it because it sits on the wall with no gap and uh, it can really sit in flush because that wall bracket's fully enclosed in the back of the panel. But the gallery stand is definitely the best way to, you know, enjoy the benefits of the gallery OLED uh, and still give you that flexibility if you can't wall mount, if you don't have um, a wall that's available with windows, things like that. The gallery stand is a great option. It's $4.99. And uh, the way it's designed is that all your cables would run up and down the middle and then they can be fed through the, through the legs because I've just removed one of the covers on there. So you can run your cables up to the back you saw you can attach your Foxtel or your satellite TV at the back and there is an IR repeater that attaches to the bottom of the center pole so that if you do have you know those other third-party remotes you don't want to have to come on change channel or you know menu and settings up here you can just point it at the TV and that repeater in the base would automatically control those devices attached to the back. So you really could achieve a look like this, but all the functionality of a TV cabinet and it's the perfect balance. I reckon that's a really good way. And I think a lot of 55 and 65 inch TVs that we sell this year will go out with one of these stands. All right, uh, you've seen that. I think what's important is if we go and have a look at gaming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any other questions on this one? Yeah. Four minutes? Uh, does the remote work with any of the previous series? This one? Yeah. Um, I've tested back to 2019 TVs and it worked fine. Yeah, we usually we go back three years, including the launch year. Yeah. So what about the NFC functionality as well? No. So Are TVs knowledge. getting 6.0? Is that because it depends uh, on the web OS? Uh, the NFC tag is actually just triggering the app in on the, the phone. phone. So that should work. It could possibly work, but I, I couldn't tell you for sure because I haven't tested it that. But I've tested the remote though. No, that's fine. Okay. So it brings up all the apps and whatever. Yeah. 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 Cool. And your other question was, will we roll back WebOS to older models? Uh, at this stage, 2021 TVs have WebOS 6.0. It's been um, some requests to roll it back, but it all depends about hardware abilities and obviously the timelines. Uh, but so if someone bought a CX in October last year, yeah. do you think they'd be able to do six point? Or if someone bought a CX in March this year, <laughs> <laughs> strictly he, he may have yeah, had a choice at the time. I have <laughs> yeah, we we do this. This came up actually. I don't know if you, any of you guys are in the session around the CS stuff that. Uh, the operating systems, no, we, we would be very surprised if this rolled back, but I do think LG uh, does a pretty good job of when apps come to our new latest range of TVs, we, we do get them rolled back on, you know, at least two, three year old TVs. So if a new app comes out on this 2021 stuff, I'm pretty confident that guys up in headquarters will bring it to the 2020, the 2019 stuff. I think we generally do a, a pretty good job of that to, to you know, look after our customers that have bought recently. So. Yeah, where possible we do. Yeah, yeah. We do. Where, where the TV can handle it. It comes down to they just get better processes, more memory, and four years ago they just can't handle the kind of kills the TV. Yeah, <laughs> basically. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so the cushions if you want. So guys, the intro to this room, um, bizarrely enough, is the games room. So pretty obvious why we've got our 48 inch C1. And as Al, uh, Thomas was explaining before, the A1 out there is uh, a slightly de spec version. But this TV here is was actually kind of demanded by customers in Australia. So last year, um, other markets had brought out this 48 inch CX model. And we got a lot of feedback on social media saying, why aren't you guys bringing it? We want it, it's great. It's, a, it's OLED in a smaller screen size, packed full of game features. We brought a small quantity of 48 inch CXs, which pretty much sold out directly um, the moment we got. Not only bring you the 83 inch C1, but also the 48 inch C1 in large quantities this year, which is packed full of all the fantastic gaming features, four HDMI 2.1 ports, 
Um, it's got G-Sync. We want it. Remember, we were the, the first brand to bring G-Sync into TVs, and all the other acronyms that Thomas will explain for gaming. But the new item is the game optimizer function. So, for someone like me, who's kind of a very part-time um, bad gamer. Game Optimizer is fantastic because like the settings where you can adjust the picture quality in movies, I can just go into Game Optimizer and go take care of all the settings and do the best for me. Someone like Thomas who knows everything can go in and tweak and optimise all the settings which Thomas will show you. So we, that's the new news on the C1 uh, this year is this Game Optimizer setting. So let the TV do all the work for you or if you're smarter than the TV then you can go in and tweak it to your heart's content. Yeah, cool. All right, so gaming is a uh, space that's always uh, evolving, right? And I think you'll agree that we're at a point now where video games are looking like movies, you know? The, the quality and the experience you get is so immersive and people just get caught up in one game. So whether you play Fortnite or you're a real gamer, um, <laughs> LG, OLED, <Whoa. laughs> LG OLED uh, TVs have a reputation for really delivering the goods in the gaming world. So LG works closely with Microsoft, Xbox, uh, Nvidia, and AMD, so that we are always aware of what they're coming up with next. And that is obviously, you know, technology partnerships, but also we even go to the level where when Microsoft Xbox was testing this console last year, we gave their testers TVs to work from home. <laughs> I wish I had a job working from home playing video games. But um, yeah, that's how good our partnership with those is. So um, this is a 48C1. And uh, quite clearly, if you go and upgrade any of the next gen hardware, PC or a PlayStation or Xbox, if you don't have a screen that has these features, HDMI 2.1, VRR, um, ALLM, you know, things like that. If you don't have that, you might as well stick with your old Xbox Series S, or oh, not S, One X. The One X or even your One, right? Because you're still stuck in 60 hertz land. So the first one you need to have is HDMI 2.1. This one, the C-Series, has four ports. You've got PC, you've got uh, PlayStation, you can have the Xbox, and then you've got your eARC for your home theater receivers. So technically, we're fully spec for whatever type of game you set up you want. Now, HDMI 2.1 is thrown around a lot, but a lot of people don't know actually what benefit it gives. So I am going to quickly put up a comparison for you. And this really does put it into context. Okay, so here's a simple question. How many times a second does a 60 hertz screen refresh the image 60 times 60 times and 120 times it wasn't a true question it's all good but I'm like 30 years <laughs> <It's laughs> <something laughs> no, 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 it's 60 and and what this is showing is the same scene in a game played you know half and half um, but this side is only showing 60 hertz and this side is showing at the 420 hertz and as I go to the scene where the guy comes around the corner, you can instantly see that, wow, on the 60 hertz side, I yeah, actually am not seeing what's happening in real time. So here, on the 120 hertz, because it's refreshing more times per second, I can see this guy popping out. Here, no idea, I'm still seeing daylight. So you can imagine, you see things earlier, you can react, reload, you can get the endorsing violence you can get out your uh, frag grenade right uh, you could get prepared and the difference is quite astounding as I keep scrolling it across I wait for him to come right out now boom I, I really know this is someone coming here it's very hard to see at this point so people think gaming is all about skill but you understand that there's obviously you've got to have good internet you've got to have a good um, uh, setup you know you've got to have a uh, good skill but the right screen is what unlocks the performance of this new hardware there. It's pretty self-explanatory. So we roll around, so boom, very, very clear he's there. So that's the difference that HDMI 2.1 uh, gives me. And of course, uh, VRR, very important. 
Variable refresh rate, does anyone know? Anyone heard of VRR before? Nodding, good. Anyone not know what VRR? Tell us anyway for that. Good, all right. So game consoles and TVs have always locked to one frame rate. 60, for example. But as you go into really, really busy parts of a level, remember this is not a movie. The game console has to create those frames 60 times a second. So when it gets to very complicated moments, the console will slow down. Might go to 55, might go to 50 frames. But the TV still thinks it's getting a 60 hertz signal. Um, so if you don't have VRR, the TV is trying to show frames that aren't there and you get mismatched images. Literally things can tear in half. VRR makes the Xbox and the TV work in unison. The TV and the Xbox can both slow down and speed up together. And the difference is massive. You know, if you're driving down the pit lane and you're going all down the, the, the main straight in a racing game and you don't have VR on, all those branded logos on the side will be just like chaos. Yeah, this is such an important thing. And so we support 4K, 120 Hertz, HDR in VRR. Awesome. Now, Tony did say about Game Optimizer. And uh, you know, some people here, I'm sure you're quite techy, you know, you use your camera in manual mode. Some people use it in, you know, auto mode. No shame in using auto mode. But Game Optimizer is, is specifically for those gamers who want to tweak and adjust to get the best out of it. So I'm going to move across to Destiny now. Good. I'm going to go find a dark scene here. What were you saying you wish your job was? Play video. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say he actually just watches TV for a living. <laughs> yeah, the problem is that I, because I, I never get a chance to play the game, so every time the journalists come back, you're on the same level, man. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you a month ago. What happened? Uh, all right. Um, so I'm going to put it into game mode, of course. It's a dedicated mode. What would game mode do? Typically, drop the lag. Yeah, drop the input lag. Yep. So the more you higher frame rate, this TV can actually do 120 frames per second or hertz in 4K at like 5.3 milliseconds. Super fast. It's really quick. It's basically instant. And uh, here is my game optimizer. So depending on what game I'm playing, I can actually pick a game picture mode to suit the type of game. So standard is all right, but of course this is first person shooter, lots of dark scenes where people can jump out of corners. As you can see, everything just lit up a little bit, but easy to see. Um, you've got other ones here, if you're playing, you know, Final Fantasy or Age of Empires, you know, you've got, you've got a full range there. So we'll leave it on first person shooter. And uh, this is something that you'll really uh, appreciate. So obviously these games can be very dark. That's about where it should be out of the box, 10. And, uh, you could be a real disadvantage, especially in those zombie games where those little crafty guys just jump out and you know, you got like half a second before they rip your arm off. Um, don't quote that. <laughs> and uh, Black Stabilizer can let you just lift some of that detail out of black there so that you can always have an advantage. And White Stabilizer is great if you have those flashbangs, you know, those white things, boom, and for a couple of seconds you're really uh, vulnerable because you can't see anything. So white stabilizer allows you to just got a spin around for this one. So you're coming out of dark scenes into bright areas. White stabilizer will let you uh, probably the wrong the game keeps resetting, so I can always get this lined up. Sorry, it's not the perfect scene, but basically this environment where coming into really bright outside, white stabilizer can help you with those moments as well. So it just does that without interrupting the rest of the colors. It's almost like legal cheating, but you know, as long as you have it first, it's okay. Um, now, cross there on the screen. Can't do that, can't do that, but um, a lot of graphics cards let you do that. There, boost mode, if you haven't got a game in 4K, 120 hertz, you've got an older um, 1X, boost mode kind of like simulates High frame rate, 120 hertz, to give you a lower input layer, which is great. That's quite popular. 
And uh, then all your other settings like VR and G-Sync and FreeSync are all adjustable from here. So if anyone is about to ask about gaming and 4K Dolby Vision in high frame rate, no. Yes. I just wanted to let you know that this only popped up on Monday. Xbox is finally releasing Dolby Vision Gaming in 4K and up until Monday we had all green ticks. <laughs> Beautiful. But we're <laughs> currently actually patching a new software update to allow uh, TVs to work with uh, 4K 120Hz and we should be the first brand with that ability. So there, LG is always like right there, ready to go, always updating, always fresh. And uh, this is a great model, and that's like Tony said, 48 inch, you know, perfect PC or perfect uh, gaming TV because it fills your peripheral vision, not too big, not too small, suits every environment. Is that patch rolling out to Web OS 5 as well? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we are um, in testing, first working on 6 first, and then working back. I can't give you any specifics. It, it did take quite a few months for some fixes to come through at the end of last year mm -hmm. where they hit Korea first and then I know it's the first time I've been on those kinds of forums where I'm like why is it taking three months for us to get the patch that's already rolled out in uh, Korea? Sure. So clearly sometimes there's a bit of that sort of That is purely because we all use the same server for the updates Yeah. and uh, they work biggest market, America then Europe, then Asia so it's purely like Volume, yeah. So if we sell more or less, we'll be a bigger market, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and then we'll get updates. Buy more, right? And then we'll fix it. Um, so that's right. That's right. If, if you do see things like that, I mean, feel. I mean, we can't do everything, but yeah. feel free to send it through through the Hill and Norton guys. And we we do, and Thomas does a great job of feeding it back to headquarters and giving them those insights and saying it, it, it is it's demanded here in Australia by you guys and the more we can provide a voice, just yeah. like getting this 48 inch last year from consumers, the more voice we can give them, um, the more likelihood of you getting it faster or it coming at all. So it was, it was totally related to you know, brand new consoles, hitting new TVs, hmm. just those weird little issues. That yeah, yeah. I thought, uh, Australian ISPs have got a history of like content networks where they get those Updates so we can distribute them locally yeah. without destroying their network. So, be oh, having a mirror partners for distributing patches would be probably would okay. be a good country for that. Wouldn't we? Well, we, I mean, we, we're generally a pretty important country in the world for LG headquarters, actually. So, Australia is a great market in terms of, as you guys would want to know, early adoption of technology. We love OLED TVs, so yeah, I wasn't aware of that. So any any sort of feedback like that, as I said, give it through to us, and we'll pass it up the chain um, and try and lobby because we, we want the best products for our people here in Australia as possible. To be honest, otherwise make a merge so that we can VPN into Korea and the TV will go. Oh, it's a Korean TV. I'll download it. That would be lovely. Hopefully one day we'll actually be able to get back to Korea and even lobby the guys on purpose in, in real life. Yeah. There's a live illustration of VR working, so you can see that the console is. It's right. Oh, hello. Um, you can see that the console is kind of like bouncing around. Sometimes as more characters jump in, I saw it drop to 109 frames per second. But you can see that the TV is uh, responding with the console, even down to fractions of hertz that die. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, the next-gen consoles are like a pretty big uh, focus here. I guess, are you expecting or accounting for stuff like the supply shortages to affect uptake? Of TVs? Oh, no, of the consoles. Well, well, you already mentioned that you know, Sony has announced that it's going to take a long yeah. time. Oh, yeah, I'm just trying to think how we... we I mean, we, we have a partnership with Xbox. Uh, as I think I said before, you know, we would have loved to do some sort of promo where you buy a TV and get an Xbox Series X. And, and they're sort of saying to us, we, we don't have enough for us to sell in Australia. So we're not giving you... We're not even going to sell it to you guys. So well, we're just kind of working through it as best we can, to be honest. I mean, I think... Our message would be um, if you're on a wait list for the console, buy the TV now so that you don't get the console in three months and the TVs are out of stock. So it's, it's a hard world that we're living in. Everybody's sort of fighting these problems uh, of supply chain, processes, chips. It is. Yeah, it's, it's a very odd world we're living in. So, okay, any more questions on gaming?
because I'm conscious my yeah. great idea to grab the pizza has been a bit delayed. But so the dining room next door, grab some pizza if you want, even take a, a whole box downstairs because we're going to head down to the sport zone. Okay, so this, welcome to the sports zone for the house and effectively what you've got here is two TVs. The one on the left is our Nanocell uh, TV. It's the 86 inch model. So as I talked upstairs, yeah, it's you know quite big. Um, as I talked upstairs, we see many Australians wanting bigger and bigger TVs. So this one's actually 75 and this one's 86 and all of our nanocell range in 2021 has both of those size options and our UHD range has that as well. So, you know, if you don't want to upgrade to the best of technology, which is OLED, you just want a really um, big, good screen, then we've got you covered in our nanocell and our UHD range there. So, um, really good panel, the colour's fantastic. Uh, it's got the IPS panel so you can get good colour even if you're sitting out there on the side. Um, good motion refresh rates on that screen as well. But um, what we're really going to show you today is announcement number one. So this is the one that's 2pm Thursday and for the first time in Australia we're actually showing you here our QNED TV. So QNED with an N. Um, and it's our mini LED product. So just to complicate my perfect description of our range, which was good UHD, better nanocell, best OLED, we throw in a fourth TV technology into the mix to say better if better or something like that. <laughs> yeah. If you want the betterest, betterest LED TV, then we're giving you the option to step up to a QNED mini LED. Why QNED? Well, we've kind of taken the best of both worlds, in our opinion, quantum dot colour technology, which you may have heard of from some other brands in the market, <laughs> and we've combined it with our nano colour technology from our premium LED range. So put the two together, and that's the QN of the QNED. And of course, you've got mini LEDs, and I'll steal another piece that Thomas gave me before, the comparison is you've got hundreds of LEDs behind this nanocell TV. In this QNED mini LED, you've got thousands of LEDs. So it's not quite the millions that you have in an OLED where every single pixel is basically on off and the colors. And that's how we're positioning the QNED is it's the best you can get LED technology we still say the best technology, as you expect from LG, is OLED, where every single pixel comes on and off. But this is our QNED coming in 4K and two 8K variants in July this year in Australia. So there's some pricing in the packs that you're going to get right at the uh, end of this. To show you that, but this is our QNED mini LED. Can I ask about that? Um, with um, what sort of density is the uh, LEDs and how are they arranged? Um, I know it's very technical, but the, I guess the main thing I actually want to know, um, just because a, a certain other brand mentioned this very recently, is like it's one thing to have uh, like lots and tiny, tiny LEDs, but yep. if you light them all up in thousands at a time, mm -hmm. kind of gets rid of that benefit. So dimming so does, Yeah. So yeah. do you dim them individually or in large banks or how much? Do you uh, I haven't got the number of LED figure. Uh, it depends on the model, like the 86 inch um, Q LED has 28,000 LEDs, but 2,400 zones. Right. So it's, it's there's multiple LEDs per zone, but yeah, the zones are very small um, and they operate individually. There. But in terms of how dense and how what size they are, I yeah. actually don't know the answer to that. Like how many zones would be on? <clears throat> a normal LED comparison. Oh, okay. So, um, in recent years, they've kind of gone down because it's very expensive to make uh, an LED look like an OLED because all those zones have to be visually controlled and heat dissipation. Um, but with mini LEDs, you can get thousands of zones, whereas over here, you'd be on hundreds or over a hundred zones depending on the size. Yeah, pretty big difference there. Yeah. 
And the control is quite amazing. <coughs> we, we will um, note that question down and follow up with our guys in the headquarters to see if we can get you more info for our benefit as well. Yeah, I think, yeah, it'd be interesting for you guys, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But I think uh, if I put on this thing here, it has colour and then black, and you can really see the difference in the blacks of the mini LED, especially in that cinema letterbox box. Mm. And as it mm. changes between scenes and goes to black, you know, it's the response is so fast. It's a great picture. Mm. And things have almost like a three dimension when you get, as you know, with OLED, is you get better contrasts, everything has more depth in the picture. That's our Alpha 7 processor doing micro contrast adjustments in the foreground and background. Yeah, great picture on that mini LED. But, you know, if you do watch from the side or you do watch in a very dark environment, mini LED is not perfect. It's not an OLED. Yeah. Those uh, LEDs are positioned away from the screen. There's a gap, and as soon as you go up to the side, you can see straight through the panel. So, yeah, the one of the best of the best, OLED still has some tricks up its sleeve. Um, we still factor it as the best of the TV range. Um, so as Tony was saying, NanoCell and the NanoCell Plus with the addition of Quantum Dots, QNED, Quantum Dot NanoCell Plus emitting display. Mm -hmm. Whereas this is just regular NanoCell. But both use an LCD screen there. But this is where, you know, pitch quality is going. And this is about as good as LED will get. And as Tony was saying, you get thousands. And if you want millions of dimming zones, OLED is the only way to get that there. To give you an idea, um, you probably didn't know, OLED has 8 million pixels in a 4K OLED. Um, and then if you have, say, 2,000 dimming zones on QNED, that means one zone is controlling 10,000, 12,000 pixels, which is a lot, there's a lot, where an OLED is individual um, pixels are a dimming zone. So in a sense, OLED has 10 times the contrast control of even the best mini LED TV out there. It's quite amazing. Should we talk about sound bus, please? Great, okay, so this is our our SP11 soundbar here. This is the model that we have included rear speakers, which are behind you. And, you know, why did people move away from the center, left, right, rear surround sound system? What was messy. This? What was messy? What was messy? The cable cables. 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 Sure, sure. Um, Calibration. It, yeah, yeah, it did have, take a lot of room. If you want good sound, you got to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, so by moving to sound bars, obviously you've, you've simplified the setup, but also we've partnered with that brand Meridian, you know, we've worked with them before. They're quite a mainstay in the premium audio industry, but they're actually the original inventors of, don't want to play that video yet, the original inventors of um, Dolby Atmos, and they sold it on to Dolby, right? So these guys really know about audio processing. And uh, Meridian allows us to extract a lot of power from smaller components because we don't want a you know a one foot tall soundbar at the expense of covering the screen. Hence, Meridian helps us design components, to purchase and acquire different technologies to get a sleek yet powerful soundbar. So let's have a listen to it. There it goes, and uh, I'll put on a, uh, a Dolby yeah. test file yeah. first. Yeah. Yeah. 
1949, and uh, that's Blade Runner. And uh, this movie was famously rendered at only 300 nits. Okay, so anyway, people are thinking, you've got to have lots of nits to get a good picture. <laughs> well, actually, yeah. a lot of movies are only 600, 800 nits, right? So if you've got a movie that's only that, I don't know what the team can do with all the rest of the mm. picture. It's not used. So you've got to remember that, you know, sometimes it's just marketing numbers, and sometimes pitch quality comes in different shapes and sizes. Um, so that's the soundbar, and what you're hearing is these upright <coughs> firing speakers. There's two at the front, two at the back, so four, and then we've got two rear speakers as well. So you are fully surrounded and then over the top enclosed there. Very immersive, and uh, you know, LG and LG together can all fully be controlled with the TV remote. And uh, there's also, if you can't fully extend to this one, we've got a smaller one, the SP8 there, that does have upright firing from the front, um, but rear speakers sold separately. All right, fine. Do you want to do your uh, red chili conclusion? I do. You do? Yes. <laughs> I do, I do. You forgot, you forgot that. I did, I actually did things. Tony, you grab your phones out, everybody. There aren't any prizes, just to be clear. Just surprises. <laughs> um, just surprises. <laughs> it's always like music for USBs. So just while Thomas is queuing that up again, just sorry to, to remind you, like I said, this QNED, um, please don't publish information until 2 o'clock tomorrow. Tomorrow's mm -hmm. Thursday, right? <coughs> yes. Yeah, if you can have everything else that you've seen so far, go for it, but just 2 o'clock tomorrow so we can get through another couple of groups and... Mm -hmm. Give everyone the same figure. Alright, so then you can see again the pattern is the same as the one upstairs. You may need to turn your automatic photo mode off because it will, um, it's very bright. It's a good example for the zoning. Ah, mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, they're in stall mode, so it's kind of pumped up for bright environments. But if you can get a, a photo in, I mean, you can see it with your own eye there. That even an IPS based screen, which had an 8 millisecond pixel response, mm there just doesn't come anywhere close to OLED's one millisecond response. Can you guys see that in your photos? Yeah, 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 yeah. right? And then, pro mode. you don't know what is a pro mode, right? Well done. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, you know, and you can imagine the difference when you're gaming, how much that micro blur is just ruining everything uh, that you're playing there. So even yeah. though you might have get, this one. have it over here. I haven't got it set up, but I can do it after this, but, being an LCD-based product, same, same Yeah, but that's going to show off your um, <coughs> nano lighting really, really well. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. We will. We will. Oh, do you want me to do it right. right now? Sure. Do it. Yeah, <laughs> you all love to see it. Dance. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Peer pressure. Peer pressure. Nah, no, it's not. Yeah, that's the thing with mini LED TVs. You've got to sit right in the centre, mm. and you can't be looking like down or up. Otherwise, you will start to see that um, yeah. the two layers going. There's nothing, but it's I'm not. Well, it's just a characteristic. I'll be there, there, or there, or there. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's perfect for it's bachelors, right? <laughs> 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 so I want you to understand that, that you know the only perfect TV out there is another. Then you'll, you'll understand. <laughs> Did we tell you that? <laughs> yeah. Is there Kool Aid in this? That's <laughs> right. Paul, you can tell me again. It's <laughs> <laughs> better. Yeah. Okay, I've got a little front on. <clears throat> It's interesting you say that because to be honest, I'm standing here and it'd be interesting if you guys come up. It, it's actually really bad from this angle, it's <laughs> off, offset. So I wow. know it's better in front, but it's oh. just the inherent. Wow, wow. that, well, it's okay, without yeah. slamming our own product. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but it's, it's LED. It's, it's, yeah. The problem is that the LCD yeah. and the backlights, mm -hmm. it's so hard to get them in sync. So what you're seeing there is the LEDs. But that, that's the inherent issue with this. But it, it's what I saw with. Say another competitor, you watch a, a, a certain space movie with a star field, mm -hmm. and it tries to illuminate one star quite brightly with another one next to it, and it just it's actually worse than side lighting. Mm 
Yeah. Which has always been the case with backlighting anyway, mm -hmm. but actually that's probably, you know, that's, that's one of the best old <coughs> CD versions of, yeah, sure. you can get. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's the yeah. point, right? and, and here, that looks amazing, right? And stunning, that picture. And oh, most yeah. consumers won't even notice this sort of stuff, but it's just not every pixel. Oh. I mean, it definitely looks better than on that one. Yeah. On this, it's just like a slight ghosting rather than yeah. Yeah, a whole chunk trying to be lit up. Yeah. Uh, it's doing a lot better than I thought it might. So. Oh, yeah. I mean, we're, we're really impressed with the TV. Don't get us wrong. You know, when we are, it's, just, it's literally just arrived in, in Australia, and that's one of the reasons this event's a little bit later than it usually is. We wanted to show it to you guys. Um, we will be putting it on sale here, and there will be a market for it for sure. Yeah. What did you just change? Uh, mode. Mode. Slow mode. Oh, as opposed to oh, right, yeah. Yeah. It only lasts yeah. about 25 seconds and yeah. not straight in front. goes back to. So oh, is it? Yeah, yeah, it's like that. To stop people from tampering with the settings. Oh, oh. Ah. Nifty. Is that like super store mode? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Built in Terminator mode. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, look, I know Miniality looks good. I know it has limitations. Mm. I like it in some environments, yeah. but this. You put them side by side with an OLED, and maybe you'll get that chance as well. You go, oh wow, OLED really is still leagues ahead, especially when it was, comes to watching movies. Mm. I mean, on the same screen size, what's the rough price difference between like QNED and OLED? We haven't finished the pricing of. I guess I can compare hours. that once the prices yeah. come out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, actually, sorry, we have got the prices published in the press. Okay, kit, yeah. to be honest. QNED? With Pardon? For QNED as well? For QNED, yes. Oh, wow. Yes, they, they've just released them like uh, Friday last week. So, oh, okay. uh, or Monday, sorry, Monday this week. So it is in there, I just can't remember off the top of my head. Yeah. Uh, Soundbar's question before we go to the next thing. You've been showing off all the Dolby stuff. What about DTS support? DTS is... Yep, so DTS and DTS uh, Essential and DTS X is all supported by the okay. Soundbar. Yep. But to get it, you've got to go uh, HDMI into the sound. And that was my next question because, yeah, the TVs had support for Dolby but didn't allow pass through for DTX, so that's the same with these ones as well. It is, okay. yeah. DTS is is great technology, but I feel like they missed the boat because they're not. Yeah, don't get me wrong, I yeah, fully yeah. understand why. I was just curious. So. Um, just for the background for you guys, DTS is a competing audio, it's like the Pepsi of the soft drinks. <laughs> oh, don't be that mean. Wow. Oh, no, I like Pretty good. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Or is it more, it's more like Kirk's or something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now that's an aura of crazy. Like, cool. yeah. 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 No one uses it. Yeah. 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 Um, it's, it's just DTS and Dolby. Dolby won as the preferred surround yeah. sound decoding yeah. for all streaming apps. Mm. So the only way you get DTS now is to get on a disc, um, which is quickly declining, unfortunately. Mm. Um, so if you do have DTS movies, say, on a NAS drive, uh, Plex would re-encode it to AAC for you, or you could set your Blu-ray player to uh, PCM and do mm -hmm. the decoding on the player. Yeah. As to we have Dolby and DTS X down to the seven model, or the six, seven, is it? Seven. Yes. Seven, yeah. So this, we're showing you today the 11, <coughs> which is top of the range. There's a nine in between, uh, an eight, this is the eight, sorry, nine, and nine. a seven. And we bring that Dolby and DTS, you know, whether it is Coke, Pepsi comparison, all the way yeah. down into seven, and then you start to get to um, smaller watts and, and less relevance to that way. So. Uh, yeah, you told me someone who still buys discs, so that's, <laughs> that's a very personal Good. question. Buy more. Um, <laughs> it's a shame. Uh, the average um, disc is three times the quality of Netflix. Oh, yeah, I do a yeah, comparison it's... between... Uh... It was Avengers, and that was 20 megabit megabits a second on a streaming service, and it was 120 megabits a second on disk. So, wow. yeah, that was a huge. The bit yeah. where uh, Thanos gets gets they attack him in the forest because it's very it's vibrant scene. And, and, yeah. yeah. So like before, Ross said, "Oh, look at that loading screen. You know, you can see the layers of blue. You wouldn't get that with a disk version. It's purely because the apps are probably all running in 8-bit. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah. It's a shame." That's, uh, that's our sort of overall show games. Okay. Yeah, any, any more questions? We've got one more announcement which we'll go back upstairs for, but any, any other questions for you guys? And as I said, you're welcome to, I say 8.30, stay and hang around and play with the TVs yourself. Make sure we aren't, tri aren't tricking you <laughs> with store mode and stuff. So <laughs> you're welcome to test it.
Okay, all right, we'll, we'll go back upstairs. Um, well, yeah, we'll get started because you guys are all here and we'll update them with the news. So, um, seriously, he'll, he'll just be happy as this, a kid. This actually, and I'll have to do the um, the queuing of the video for this one because top my assistant Thomas isn't here. Um, so, the second announcement that we have for you today relates to <laughs> excuse me, a 16k upscaler. So, <laughs> do you want me to just throw guesses out to the room first? No, you know. no, no I, mean, six, I mean, what else could it be, right? Not a 16k upscaler. So, this is particularly oh, exciting for me Here's my guess. because I've been saying this for about two and a half years because we've been told for about two and a half years that our wonderful OLED R rollable TV is coming, and every six months they tell us, no, it's not coming. But I can reveal to you now the second announcement embargoed to 8 o'clock Friday morning is that the rollable TV will be going on sale in Australia in July this year. Finally on a roll. Yay. Finally, rollable has, is rolling out in Australia. So oh. it will be, you can use that if you want. Yeah, thanks. Um, <laughs> it will be a special order process, so you'll have to go to <coughs> lg.com express your interest we haven't quite determined whether it's a uh, wonderful deposit or a full amount up front but once you put your order in it will actually be custom made in korea based on that order so we won't be bringing display units to australia and putting them in all, all the stores we'll be effectively making to order so custom order and then custom made so order. there won't even be a couple of flagship stores that get demo models it's not purely... not at this point okay no not at this point it's it's a specialised process to manufacture it, and we want to make it special for the consumer. Um, and it'll, it'll get made in Korea, it'll take around six to eight weeks, fingers crossed, because as I said, there is a lot of uh, disruption in the world at the moment, and be brought down to Australia, and of course, we'll bring it out to the customer's home, install it, set it up, make sure it's all working properly, and, and take them through how to use it. Um, Mr Baker will probably be the star of that show as well. What's the price, you ask? Yes. <laughs> Only a hundred and thirty thousand dollars. <laughs> so I'll take two. Sorry. Indeed, indeed. Yeah. Does that go like twelve? I can imagine some of the owners will think that's a TV for now. That's the TV sliding down to the line. How, how big is it again? How many inches? Sixty-five. Only available in a sixty-five inch model. Um, this it year. Does, it, it, yeah, it, it does come this is a hundred and thirty thousand dollars. Yeah. This is a hundred watt soundbar unit built in the standard yeah, we soundbar as well. Yeah, and <laughs> is anyone going to actually buy this? No. I, I can tell you, no, they are. I, I can tell you. <laughs> I can tell you. Over the two and a half years that we've been promising it's coming, we, we've actually had numerous inquiries from people saying. When is it coming? I want one. Can Shut you get it here even if it's not launched? I live at, in Vaucluse. <laughs> Vaucluse, or I think like Sydney apartments that yeah. basically have million dollar yeah. views that mm, look out yeah. on the harbour. Yeah. That to be honest, these guys are rolling up. But you, you know, I thought there was a version rolling. that it was rolling down. Is that actually yeah. an install option or was that just a demo? It's, uh, it's, it's, not, a, it's not an option okay. at the moment. It's probably <laughs> next year's model. Um, where and then I'll just buy that one. one. That one comes yeah. in. It's called the drop <laughs> It's the TV <laughs> version of the drop bed. <laughs> it's very Australian. Yeah. It's a six hundred thousand dollar phone. So, like I said, eight o'clock Friday is your time to be able to go out and publish that. But um, yeah, I'm very pleased not to say that it's coming <laughs> soon. Yeah. Yet again, in fact, that the PR guy at CES the last time said, "Oh my God, we can't say it's coming again unless it really is coming." Yeah. So, it did really you say is July? coming. Do you say July? July yeah. in Australia, it will be available to order. So whoever yeah. gets in there, puts their order. As I said, we'll have to get lays down their titanium amex. Lays down there whatever's above so titanium amex to so buy it. Vibranium or something, or adamantium, <laughs> adamantium or something. Yeah. Yeah. Or, the, or the floors, you know, fan off some glove or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I want to ask a question about. Um, WebOS rolling out onto uh, Born and uh, Sonic TVs. Is this a clever marketing uh, campaign by LG to get people used to WebOS on these cheaper TVs? So then they go, "Oh, I can. I know that system, you know, and I, I want to buy one of the uh, OLEDs." 
Um, <laughs> because, it was, uh, because you, you know, I mean, that was the first time I'd seen Weibo OS on yeah. other devices, yeah. and I was quite surprised and yeah. pleased yeah. to see it. Weibo OS has proven to be a stable platform for smart TVs mm. yeah. um, compared to other platforms out there. Um, it's been a good outlet for us to increase our exposure to the mm. Weibo OS platform. And, also, and I noticed it's promoting the ThinQ platform as well. It is, yeah. It literally, yeah. some of it is quite similar to ours. Um, but it also expands the reach of WebOS, which improves our abilities to take on new apps and mm. uh, attractiveness to content well, developers. A friend of mine is wondering when you're going to put KO onto his born WebOS 75 inch or 85 inch TV that he bought from Aldi. Sure. And he can goes, only improve things so yeah. much. <laughs> <laughs> but ha we, I mean, we're a commercial organisation, and I think you know, we make a lot of products around the world. As you guys well know, we sell LG Display, our sister company sells the panels to LG Electronics, they sell them to other brands as well. Uh, you know, we need to make money as an organisation, but the good thing is it goes back into new development of technology for everybody's sake. So we hope that licensing it to other brands will put more money back into the bank to enable more development to get a better product for everyone. And hopefully, we hope from LG Electronics side that we get the, the best of it before it goes to the other brands. Mm. Just out of pure curiosity about the role of all TV, because yep. for me it's just a conversation point mm -hmm. well out of my journalist paper. Yep. Um, on the demo it showed line view and fully open view. Does yep. it have the capability to adjust for different movies to avoid the black bars? So if you're watching 239.1, can you get it down to that aspect ratio? That would be cool. Ah, oh, that's a really good question. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you. Ah, I wish I thought of that. <laughs> um, we'll ask. We'll we'll ask. ask. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm just curious. Have you ever seen yeah. the there we go. I think it is, that's a tough one. I'll give you that's a tough one. Because that's what huge potential I see for that one. Yeah. Yeah. If you play yeah. paying that much money, screw your sex money. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> from, what, from what we've <laughs> seen in terms of, I think those views are <laughs> fixed. Okay. So I'm, I'm yeah, yeah. thinking unlikely, but yeah. we'll certainly follow up. And maybe potential for the future. A firmware yeah. update. Hmm? Firmware update. Could be a firm <laughs> So guys, this, you, you're more than welcome to stay. You're more than welcome to keep asking questions, but let me formally thank you. First of all, we do appreciate you guys joining us and, and giving us your time here today. So I hope you found that of value, uh, particularly Thomas, I know um, it's very valuable to you guys to explain all these technical details, but hopefully you saw a good lineup from us again in 2021. Um, we're really excited to actually bring OLED to more people in Australia with a bigger range and more competitive pricing starting very soon. So check your websites for information and we'll be offering free delivery on our OLED products and our bigger screen TVs in the next sort of 48 hours as well. So we are serious about getting this great technology out to Australians because um, we love it so much. and. Uh, Thank you very much. Like I say, don't feel pressured to go. You're very welcome to stay until we all get kicked out, but that's the formal thank you. So thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. And thanks, Thomas. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers.